Hello and welcome to the YouTube channel of mprugs.com. My name is Mike. I'm the moderator in a series of videos that is all about handmade carpets from around the world. I welcome you to our channel and I hope you and your family are doing well. In today's episode, I want to introduce you to a very popular type of a tribal handmade carpet that is made by the Baluchi people by the people, tribes. These are nomadic folks in southeastern Iran, Afghanistan, as you can see by the map there. Um, they kind of southeastern Iran, parts of Afghanistan, parts of Pakistan. This is a nomadic tribe known as the Baluchi and the Baluch carpets as you can see here I got three examples that I chose very popular with the home decor um, folks who are looking for handmade tribal decor items and what is cool about these rugs is that they're not only 100% authentic this is handmade um, ethnic art uh, artisanship at its best but the thing is about the Baluchi rugs is that they're also not very expensive even though they're handmade and everything they are nowhere near as expensive as some of the other handmade Persian rugs they're also very durable so if you are into tribal rugs if you like to learn a little bit more about the different types of Persian rugs please watch this video as I'm going to be showcasing three rugs these are all made by the Baluchi people but the one is made in Iran one comes from Pakistan and one comes from Afghanistan so it's all about the Baluchi rugs so in this video, this is also uh, one of the questions that I've been getting a lot from folks who've been watching our channel is that I have made myself available to the viewers. So many of you have already taken me up on the offer where, for example, I have a link in the description below to one of my videos where I show you what type of pictures I need in order for me to be able to help you with carpets that you may already own. And I get, um, as our channel keeps growing, I'm getting more and more folks emailing me with the pictures and with questions about rugs. And these are the types of carpets that a lot of you either inherited from family or friends or you may see them in the stores. Um, sometimes people, they buy them secondhand in places like eBay and everything. And one of the things that a lot of people ask is, well, I got this rug. Is it worth a whole lot of money? Um, is it worth for me to basically ship it off to a relative? I had one member, um, I had a viewer recently who was a subscriber who emailed me a picture and said, Mike, you know what? I got this carpet. It's in the Middle East. Is it worth it for my aunt to send it to me? Well, I looked at the picture and I said, you know what? Honest to God, I think the shipping may end up costing more than what the rug is worth. Now, if the rug has sentimental values, then that's a different story. Just as you would probably have no problems preserving something that your children have made it may not have a monetary value but it has it means something greatly to you and so my suggestion to him was to take a look at the rug and think of it as not as a valuable item but as a personal item and then they can decide whether they want to spend the money or not but these are the types of rugs that you typically find and just to give you an idea, a little bit of a background, the, um, as I mentioned to you, the Baluchi rugs, they are, they are basically, they come from this almost mystical area known as Baluchistan. Baluchistan is, if you look at Google Maps, if you, um, yeah, if you Google it, you'll see that it's a region 
that defines southeast Iran, south Afghanistan, and then also southwest of Pakistan. That region is known as Baluchistan. And the people there are known as the Baluchi. And these are ethnic tribes that are basically, they're very nomadic. They have been, this is a culture that goes back centuries. Apparently, from what I understand, they are also, um, basically, I mean, we're all kind of related to each other. My parents are from Iran. But my parents, my mother's side is from Azeri. She is from Tabriz. My father's side is from northern Iran by the Caspian Sea. But basically, there is a lot of movement that has occurred in the last centuries. And apparently, the Baluchi people also originated. Also, um, centuries ago, apparently, they have come from the Turkish area, but again, this is something I don't know. Um, what I do know is that these are very tribal, very proud people, and the carpets they make are very traditional, very tri what we call basically the classic example of a tribal rug, but there is a little catch, and that is you have carpets that are mainly made out of wool, but depending on where you get the rugs from and when they were made, you can have sheep hair, you can have goat hair, you can even have camel hair. And we're actually going to be talking about the camels here in just a little bit because there is an actual connection between the camels and carpets, which you generally speaking don't find a whole lot of. But it's really, it's really fascinating to me at least. It's, it's a trip. Um, but basically, you have carpets that are made, again, tribal design, very classic, geometric patterns. And like in the case of the one that is made from Iran, um, these are borderline depending on where you go to. They can be kalims like in the piece right here, where um, it's a very thin pile, um, kind of like, for example, for my clients in the United States, if you look at, if you think of a kalim, I oftentimes think of like Native American carpets. You can also have them with a very thick pile, like the piece that I'm standing on. Um, this piece right here, made in Pakistan, it is also a Baluchi rug, but it is made with a very thick wool pile. You will also find that these typically have a cotton foundation, but in the old days, they would also use goat hair, like you see in this piece right here, made in Afghanistan. Here you have goat hair, here you have regular wool, uh, cotton foundation as in the Persian rug and the Pakistani rug. So you have different types of hairs. Now there are some parts, and unfortunately I was actually not able to find them. They are rare, but they actually used to make, the, in the old days, they don't really make them anymore. Um, they used to use camel hair in older pieces. But generally speaking, that it was done literally, I want to say we're talking around 1900, 1930s, 1940s. And then they kind of went away. Um, also, a lot of people don't know this. Um, if you Google Australia and the camel trails, you will find that a lot of the camels that were actually raised in the Baluchistan area, the British shipped them off. They gathered them up and shipped them off to Australia where they were used to actually build the railroads. But that's a whole different story. I'll let you guys sort that out. You guys can go on Google and read all about it. I was fascinated when I read about it. But basically what you have is you have handmade 
tribal rugs. They are still genuinely made with 100% vegetable dyes. And because they are using vegetable dyes and they oftentimes use their own wool, these are nomadic tribes. They do not travel. Um, as they move around, they don't buy the wool from the markets, much more so than using their own wool from their own sheep, from their own animals. And this is what you will also times find um, in the tribal rugs, where in the city rugs, the wool comes from almost like commercial um, ranchers. These are people that are specialized in producing the wool and then basically getting it off to the weavers. Well, when you look at tribal rugs, you generally speaking have folks where they use their own material. So they use their own wool of their own animals. This is why sometimes you will have goat hair instead of cotton foundations. This is why sometimes you have kelims instead of regular wool with a thick pile, uh, regular rugs with a thick pile. And so the with these types of nomadic people, even though they're all Baluchi rugs, you can have different types of them. And that makes it really fascinating. But basically, um, as I always do, is I'm gonna get behind the camera here in a little bit and give you some of the close-ups. These are generally speaking, for example, not the type of rugs that I really feature. For example, our website at mprugs.com. And that's simply because a lot of our rugs here are in Europe. My website is based in the United States. Honestly, the shipping of these would oftentimes cost more than the rug itself. So it's not something that I do, but these are beautiful rugs. And if you are someone, if you are into the tribal designs, if you're looking at home decor and you want a down to earth type of feel, these are the types of carpets I have absolute no problems recommending them to you. Now, there are many different types of tribal rugs. I have featured many of them in my other videos. But one of the things that I thought I also mentioned to you when, we, when I talked about the camels earlier, the Baluchi rugs are known for a design that is known as gold. It's a, what they call it a, a camel print. And this is something that is, um, the gold design is something that is, well, I'm just going to step aside in order for me to explain it to you. This is a design that is very classic with the Baluchi rugs. And that is, if you look closely at this large runner right here, or better yet, if you look at the picture, you will see that there are medallions in each section, these medallions known as gull. This is what the Baluchi rugs are so famous for. Or, for example, here we have also a very long runner. If you look at the picture of the runner, you will notice the same thing. You have basically what amounts to humps almost. And this is something that the medallion the sections, geometric medallions, this is classic. What the Baluchi rugs are known for. Now, generally speaking, the Baluchi rugs come in two very popular sizes. One is the medium, small to medium size, like the one that you see here. And the other ones, well, right here, the runners. The runners, this is classic. Um, where you have these long runners, because remember, in the old days, they used to put them in tents. These are nomads. And having multiple runners is actually easier to handle than having a very large rug. You can easily fold them up, toss them on the back of a cart, on a horse, camel, 
donkey, whatever animal you have, and you can move around. And so these types of rugs were used, they were made for the domestic market. And so they were not only designed, they were not only supposed to be simple, but also durable. And this is why when I mentioned to you earlier, if you're looking at tribal rugs, you want something that's homemade. Um, you want something that literally has a history, a personality, and a story. This is something I have absolute no problems recommending to any of you who are into these types of decor rugs because they are literally meant to last. Even though this is a Kalim right here, the same with the Afghan, it's going to last you. And this mill piece right here with the thick pile wool, that's easily going to last you a hundred years. So there's no doubt this thing is meant to be abused and used. And so I just wanted to show you, yes, you can have handmade Persian rugs. You can have, whether it's Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan. And here's also another example of you have people from various countries. But for example, I refer to them as Persian rugs. To me, these are all brothers and sisters. Um, we may be separated by borders, but at the end of the day, we're all one and the same. And so these are the types of rugs that, like I said, I would love to be able to offer to you guys as well. It's just that logistics, Honestly, it wouldn't make sense for you to buy them off of me since the shipping would just simply be too much. And so, but I wanted to introduce them to you. I think these are just absolutely fantastic pieces. Now, as I'm always going to do is I'm going to get behind the camera and show you some of the features of the individual rugs. And then I'm going to come back to you and say my quick goodbyes. Um, as I always do, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you have questions about a rug that you may own, feel free to look at the video below in the description. It features, um, I show you what type of pictures I need, the size and all that stuff, so I can quickly take a look at this. I can take a look at your pictures and get back to you quickly. This is something I like to do. I want our channel to be interactive and as it keeps growing, with all the great feedback and support that I have been getting from folks like yourself. Um, it's just been absolutely amazing and I cannot tell you how grateful I am. And so try to help out whichever way I can. Also, um, I typically do about one or two videos a week. So if you are into Persian rugs, feel free to hit that subscribe button so that you are notified when there is a new video that has been released. And so um, there you go. I'm going to now get behind the camera and show you some of the details. So I'm going to see you again here in just a second. So here I am now this time from behind the camera as I oftentimes like to do. And just to give you an idea, here is, for example, you have a beautiful Persian Kalim. Again, these are all Baluchis, but you can see the earth colors. And um, I do have to light up the warehouse quite a bit just to be able to take the videos and everything. So I just want you to know the rugs are not as bright as um, you may see in the video here when I do the close-ups. But like, for example, here you have a Kalim cotton foundation, very typical um, design, very much tribal. This is almost borderline caucus. Then you have over here, now this is um, in the middle here, you have Pakistan. And you can see that it has a much thicker pile when you compare it. You know, here's the, Af um, here's the Persian Kalim uh, Baluche. Here is, and you can see the difference in the thickness. Here is the Pakistan. But these are basically... Um, all, all referred to as Persian because the people, they move around. You're talking about a region where even though there are on the map borders, when you're actually there, these are nomadic tribes. And so, but, um, so just absolutely beautiful pieces. 
And I'm just going to compare because they are very similar. Here you have the Afghan, here you have the Pakistan. But in both cases, I'm actually just going to open up the runner and then you can see. You see the medallions and then you have, um, there is the Afghan and then here you have the Pakistan. And you see the design right here, the gold medallion. This right here, which is also found here, this is classic. Um, with the Baluchi rugs, where one medallion go, basically goes into the next one. And you can see it here on these very long runners, where it just continuously goes. Um, and this is what you would expect to see. This is a very classic type of pattern. You can also see how these rugs are very much in common, uh, they're related to, for example, the Kazakh rugs. And you can see, if you, when you look at my other videos on the tribal rugs, how they're all intertwined, how they all seem to be related. And so I just wanted to showcase these rugs to you with these close-up videos. As I always do, I'm going to come back to you right now and just give you my final thoughts and a quick goodbye to you. So there is our video about the Baluchi rugs. I hope this video was something that you may have enjoyed and I hope the information is of use to you. As I, as I mentioned earlier, if you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section or visit us at mprugs.com. Um, I believe I have mentioned to you earlier, these are not the type of carpets that I typically feature simply because the carpets are at our warehouse in Europe and for me to ship them worldwide honestly doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I do not like to take advantage of people and to me being that these are genuinely inexpensive rugs. It wouldn't make sense for me to uh, sell you a rug for example for $500 and then add $300 for shipping when you can buy a rug like this for maybe three to $500 and you can enjoy it and it's to me it makes much more sense. But again, I just wanted to introduce you to these types of carpets. I'm going to be coming back to you with many more videos to come. So in the meantime, I wish you and your family the very best. Until we see each other again, take care. Bye-bye.